Journalism. Novosti Weekly, Croatia. Novosti Weekly is a Croatian magazine funded by the Serb National Council, which represents the Serb minority in Croatia. The paper deals with a whole range of topics, not just those related to the Serb community. Over the past year, the paper's journalists have faced death threats, attacks, and seen their magazine burnt on the streets of Zagreb. This follows the election in 2016 of a right-wing coalition government whose nationalistic stance has turned a blind eye to the far right and the growing nostalgia for Croatia's Nazi past. In late 2016, Novosti broke the story that politicians and a veterans group had installed a memorial plaque inscribed with a World War II fascist motto near the site of a former concentration camp where more than 83,000 Serbs, Roma and Jews were murdered. Following the story's release, a far-right group organised a protest under the windows of their offices, shouting fascist and anti-Serb slogans. Novosti Weekly aren't afraid to challenge movements like the alt-right, who want to use force, violence and intimidation to prevent journalists speaking out. Novosti's editors say, as journalists we realise that our professional duty is to write truth, but a significant part of our business has become the defence of the right to freedom of expression, without which truth is not possible. Wendy Funes, Honduras. Wendy Funes is an investigative journalist from Honduras who regularly risks her life for the right to report on what's happening in her country. Honduras is an extremely harsh environment for reporters, especially those investigating human rights abuses. In 2017, two journalists have been murdered and the World Press Freedom Index rated the country at 140 out of 180. Funes has also suffered the violent deaths of a number of friends and her own father, for which no one has been convicted. Despite these personal tragedies, Funes remains dedicated to social justice and fighting censorship. For one article, she had her own death certificate issued to highlight corruption in the civil registration office. For another, she disguised herself to investigate child begging. Funes also writes about violence against women, a huge problem in Honduras, where one woman is killed every 16 hours. And she's challenged the silence around the huge number of rapes suffered by indigenous women and girls, who often face criminalization and imprisonment under Honduras's total ban on abortion. She is courageous in the face of death threats. She's courageous in the face of censorship. And she's courageous just in terms of getting up every morning and saying, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Her work has provoked many threats. But regardless, Funes says, every blow has made me a warrior and every obstacle is a chance to prove that adversity must never stop us. My way to achieve my life's purpose is the journalism I love. Muckrock Foundation, America. Muckrock is a non-profit collaborative news site dedicated to filing, sharing, and analyzing freedom of information requests at all levels of the US government, with the aim of making democracy more transparent. Might be it's because local journalists in your town aren't covering the issue, or maybe you're just curious. America's Freedom of Information Act is over 50 years old, but accessing information is confusing and tedious, made harder by the increasing secrecy of government. Muckrock is combating this by partially automating the process. Open to journalists, activists, and members of the public, the site makes this complex procedure much easier. Muckrock has filed over 40,000 requests, shedding light on government surveillance, censorship, and police militarization, as well as hundreds of other issues. This year, Muckrock broke many stories about the CIA, including that the agency forgot about a stash of classified documents which had been poorly stored in a former vice president's barn. Their efforts to bring true transparency to journalism in the American media is very notable, and I salute them for the bravery and the innovation. Muckrock continues to double in size each year and grow its ambitions. Recently, they produced a lesson plan called the Freedom of Information Act for Kids and have expanded their reach to Canada. Muckrock says, we hope to continue increasing our impact, putting cutting-edge transparency tools in the hands of ordinary people. Avispa Media, Mexico. 
Avispa Media is an independent online magazine, priding itself on the daring use of multimedia to bring alive political, economic and social discourse in Mexico and Latin America. The site's use of pictures, videos, music and maps to illustrate their stories is particularly striking. Avispa's coverage includes reports on organized crime, indigenous peoples and paramilitary involvement in the energy industry and mining megaprojects. Focusing on such contentious issues is highly risky. Journalists in Mexico often fall victim to violent deaths. Between 2000 and 2016, at least 105 journalists were murdered in Mexico. Many were killed in broad daylight and some in front of their families. Avispa also reports on the lives of marginalized peoples. Hemos sido golpeados de parte de la unidad de policial por querer defender nuestra tierra, nuestro pueblo, nuestras comunidades afectadas sobre el río Tabasara. In the last 12 months, a large proportion of their work has been concentrated on indigenous communities whose place at the front line of land right disputes means their human rights are often abused. The journalism from Avispa reflects the life of indigenous people and essentially gives them a voice that isn't available to them elsewhere. Avispa Media has taught multimedia reporting skills to members of these communities to aid them in telling their own stories. In the future, Avispa wants to create a journalism school for young people from deprived backgrounds so that ordinary citizens can inform the world about what's happening in their region and break the stranglehold of the state and large corporations on the media.